Hi, and welcome to Journey to Journeyman, episode number five. I usually like to thank for the comments for the earlier version, but to be honest with you, I'm filming them at the same time, so I don't have any comments yet because four is not posted. But uh, anyway, on this uh, episode, what I'm going to do is see if I can melt down some aluminum and get it into usable ingots or usable uh, metal to turn on the lathe to practice on or even make some items. Spoiler alert. Yes, it's pretty cool. So let's go out there and melt some aluminum and then get it uh, turned down and, and check out the metal. Got a recycling bin there full of smashed pop cans. And now there's a dozen of them in there. And um, we're going to melt that down and see if we can smelt some aluminum today. So with a hair dryer that my wife threw out and some PVC from a son's school project, I get the fire hot, but not a hot enough to melt it in the Dutch oven. So I saw another guy take a stainless steel can, put it right down in the charcoal chimney starter, and that got hot enough to start melting the aluminum. I'm really stoked here because as these cans start melting, I see beautiful shiny metal down in the bottom, and I'm really happy. Well, I'm a share fail number two. The cast iron didn't work, and this worked for a while, then I had a burn through. <laughs> so, I pulled it out of there, stuck it over there, I have to figure out something else. And you can see there is some, very difficult to see, but that's mol molten aluminum down in there. Well, here's the carnage here. Um, I pulled that thing apart, I had to cut it off, and Here's some aluminum that's uh, that's left over. Anyway, we're going to try uh, plant C. Well, several days later, I went and got this little camping uh, stove kind of thing set up for, had a couple cups in it in the lid. But it's a thicker stainless, and I stuck the aluminum that I had melted last time that fell on the ground. And we're going to try this, uh, try this again. I'm so stoked to see that beautiful shiny aluminum down in there. And then all of a sudden, I really didn't see aluminum too much more. I started seeing the spongy stuff on the top. Well, the, stra the disaster struck again, that is. Um, did another burn through. It went right through that. I thought that was a thicker gauge metal and could uh, handle it, but it burned through. I started getting the spongy stuff on st the top, and I'm like, what is going on? And I looked over and there's my aluminum right down there anyway I'm gonna have to try it again a different way and that's not a failure that's just modern art geez Louise got to get a thicker crucible so I found that crucible at uh, Target a little bit thicker crucible it's about my guess is about three thirty seconds of an inch thick got a new charcoal chimney starter and thought Let's put that old aluminum in there and give it another shot. Now this hair dryer has a coal setting and on that um, I've got it held down, the coal setting held down with a clamp just so it's just blown cold air and look at that beautiful metal. So I got enough to where it will pour now and I was so scared that I might get a burn through. Once I got it to a certain amount of metal I just decided to pour it in a soup can and you can see that that soup can is it's uh, been put in a fire and I was a little concerned that um, the coating on the inside, I saw some guys do that and they got some porosity so I put that in the fire, let it burn all that stuff off and then pour it. Now here again is a second set of um, a, a second pouring because I had enough to pour and uh, once again I'm scared of a burn through so 
I had enough metal in there to pour, so I poured it. And that's the two so far. So with more pop cans, here's the third one. And I poured it right on top of the other pour after it had cooled. So you get to see how nice and beautiful that metal is. But um, being that double pour, you will see that there is a, a, a line in there. And I don't mean to do any string structure with it, but just the proof of concept. But you'll see that line later on. And here it is. Pulled the soup can off. I had to get it off of there with pliers. And all kinds of stuff but you can see there's a little line a distinction between the two pores on that uh, can there if you'll please open your Bibles to the book of speeds and feeds anyway I decided to try um, see if I can get this speed and feed thing right um, so basically I wanted to see about uh, how fast to turn this aluminum bar and since there's such a range on it, I use Pi as 3, so basically it's, um, and then I looked over here for aluminum, and I didn't look at this part over here. I just looked at the range of 750 down to like 600 for the high-speed steel cutter that I'll be using. And so I kind of came up with, oh, for the high-speed steel on the, the surface feet per minute and all that, that um, somewhere in a 960 to 1200 RPM for high speed steel and carbide a little bit um, uh, faster for cutting the aluminum and basically what I did was took uh, a four times the uh, surface feet per minute divided by two and a half inches and that's what I um, came up with was the 960 to the 1200 RPM see how that cuts because I use a sewing machine motor and not the right pulley size on that motor, I can only guesstimate my RPM. So I went to Harbor Freight and bought a photo sensor tachometer just to kind of get an idea of what speeds I was getting out of my uh, head uh, spindle that is. And I needed to turn this thing right around 900 to 1200 RPM so it's at 788 or so and I thought that's close enough we'll go a little slower and just see how that worked out and by golly it worked like a champ Now that the ridges are off, it's just a beautiful piece of aluminum. So I faced off the end so that it had a flat spot um, to sit in the four jaw chuck. And we're going to get the other side taken care of. I put some strips of aluminum to protect the finish on that and dialed it in and started cutting the other part to get it nice and smooth. For some reason I was able to get this one smooth below those ridges with a little bit more meat on the diameter. Not exactly sure why. And so now I faced off the bottom of the can and it's really really cutting very nicely. Cutting like butter. Now the end of it has a fairly decent finish on it when I get finished here and I wanted to polish up a little part of it to see if it would polish and it did. Now that I know the aluminum is good, I've made some more ingots 
that one in a stainless steel, that one in a coffee cup. And I tried it with this new little setup here with some bricks that I bought from Lowe's. Saw a guy have that, an Australian guy had that, uh, a furnace set up like that. And it worked fairly well. I'm going to make some tweaks on it. But uh, there's the garbage that is left over that guys talk about. And there's still a lot of aluminum in that. So I'm going to, once I get my furnace made, I'm going to put that back in and try to get some more aluminum out of it. Well, here's the aluminum from that pour, so that's uh, a couple of more blocks. And I thought with this big one, I could even make square things out of it if I need to. So now it's time to machine this new stuff and see if there's any porosity in that. This is the piece that I couldn't get a real good finish on, and it was due to vibration. So I started doing some investigation, and sure enough, the uh, set screw that holds the spindle on had started backing out and therefore the spindle was getting loose. With this big piece as well, wanted to check the porosity on that one. And once again, as I turn it down, there is no porosity. It's just beautiful shiny aluminum. So I turned it around, faced it flat, and then turned it as well. And here's the aluminum I got. So this is what I have. This came out of the coffee can, so that's a pretty nice size one. And um, solid. No porosity as you can see. I mean, just beautiful aluminum. This is the one that had the double pour. Now, I know that that, um, that line right there is just where the other aluminum got poured in there and I won't be using this like as one piece but um, that is just some really nice aluminum to use all this I mean there's 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 no porosity and uh, it's uh, it's really solid thick aluminum so I can't wait to start uh, machining this stuff here in a in a future episode Hi guys, just going to go over some uh, quick lessons learned. Uh, number one, can you make uh, aluminum that's usable out of pop cans from your backyard? Absolutely. Be careful. I mean, it's hot and it's liquid, so it can hurt you. Um, so be careful, but you can take pop cans and turn them into really nice aluminum. I hear a lot of guys say it's a waste of time because there's so much garbage that's in it, but uh, it's free, guys. Maybe a dollar or two worth of charcoal, you know, and uh, you take your garbage and you throw it away and you really got some nice solid aluminum. Uh, I didn't get any pores in it and um, I poured mine into soup cans and a, a coffee can, but I put that in the stove first or into the fire first to burn off the stuff on the inside and maybe that's why I didn't get any, any porosity, but I got no porosity at all and I've got some really neat aluminum ingots that I'm going to be turning with the, just to practice on. Also, if your lathe has vibration, you can't get a good finish. I kept thinking it was just my technique, and some of it probably is, but my spindle was loosening up. So uh, at one time, I, I still have my remote control helicopters, and I flew remote control helicopters, and one of the things that you had to do was put blue Loctite on your metal to metal screws because if you didn't, if you had metal going into metal and there's a screw, I don't care how tight you got it, it would back out. And that's what I'm finding with the lathe there. So I went through on um, the spindle, the thing that keeps the spindle on, pull a little set screw out, put some blue Loctite on it. And gosh, guys, now that that <laughs> spindle is tight, this is like glass. I mean, it is so smooth. This is so unbelievably smooth finish on there and I'm really really kind of looking forward to, uh, to machining this and seeing what I can uh, get out of it. So can you do pop cans and turn it into grade aluminum? Yes. Now once again I don't know what the grade of aluminum is and all that but this is solid solid aluminum guys so I can at least practice on it. So thank you very much for uh, watching and we'll see you on the next episode of Journey to Journeyman.